Welcome. My name is William Messacar. I am a Master Model Railroader in the 4th Division of the Pacific Northwest Region of the National Model Railroad Association. And I want to welcome all of you to the virtual layout tour we'll have presented today by members of the NMRA. We would encourage you to find out about the NMRA and join in order to participate in these virtual tours. We have other virtual clinics and other activities for the National Model Railroad Association that we think you'll find uh, a big help to your modeling and you'll get to meet model railroaders just like you. So welcome to our tour and I hope you enjoy it. Well, my railroad is based on uh, branch line operations of Erie Lackawanna, primarily in Pennsylvania. I come from a Lackawanna family, had a Lackawanna Yard Master in Buffalo, New York. My uncle was a switchman in Elmira, New York. My uncle Jim that lived near us in New, New Jersey was in train service in New, uh, New Jersey. And his retirement job was in a passenger train from Washington, New Jersey to Hoboken and back. And uh, when I was a little kid, my mother would take me to station in Hackettstown, New Jersey, put me on the trade with, with, with Uncle Jim. I'd ride to Netcon and she'd beat the tray there and pick us up. And she always told me she had to drive like crazy to make it. And um, I just thought walking up and down the aisles with Uncle Jim with his blue uniform and uh, punching tickets. And he gave me the, pick at the, the ticket puncher and let me tick a bunch of tickets. I thought that was the neatest job in the world. Okay. And then uh, when I got out of high school, a year after I got out of high school, Erie Lackawanna was hiring uh, agent operators. I'd gone down to Hoboken trying to hire out in train service, be just like my Uncle Jim. They weren't hiring trainmen, but they were hiring agent operators, and I got on as an agent operator. So, when I, so then after I got divorced and I met my present wife, she had a house in Marysville. Mile post 41.2 Bellingham Sub. The tracks are right in the front yard. Okay. Yeah, but she, um, and I was living in my RV trailer in Linden, train master at Bellingham. And then she wanted to know if, um, if I wanted to move in with her. Like, yeah, railroad tracks in the front. But the first question I asked her was, can I build a railroad in your garage? <laughs> that was the most important thing. Okay, about moving in here. So uh, anyway, she said yes, and as soon as this thing loads up. I designed the railroad as a dog bone with the end at the garage door so it would fold up into the air. And she could pull her car in. The height of the railroad was determined by the, by the hood of her car, which set the height of the Where? railroad 54 inches above the floor. So anyway, so there's her car in the garage. There's the railroad folded up so her car could go in there. Then when she got a bigger car that would not fit in the garage <laughs> underneath the layout anymore, then I got to fold this down and leave it down and make it a permanent thing, which sure did help with all the problems I was having with derailments across the joints there because of the wood expanding, contracting continually in an unheated garage. And that is the story of how I got this railroad and how I got it built. And this is, this is what held it up. This is heavy duty chain from the lumber yard and snap joint there and into a joist. And that's all that held the whole thing up and it worked for 10 years. Beginning up here at the garage door, there's uh, insulation on the garage door, which made a heck of a difference in here as far as temperature went for the winter. Does it sound good enough? This is the town of Harmony. Yes, it is. Yeah, that's the section there that folded Lime up. Junction with the uh, engine turbo here at Lime Junction. She has to go around. That's a small yard at Lime Junction. We have the Town of Prosperity. We have a drop leaf here. Take this to the other side of the This is Bath. This is the New England Railroad. 
and we connect with the Northampton and Bath Railroad and we serve two cement mills, Keystone Cement and Penn Dixie Cement. Penn Dixie Cement is back at the other end of the garage here. It's actually on a nine inch wide shelf. That sort of intrudes into my wife's laundry area. Only go nine inches and allow enough room for her to be able to reach into the knobs on her dryer. And we we'll duck under here and we'll look at the other side of the town of Prosperity. This is Northampton Avenue in Prosperity. View the railroad from the other end of the garage. And on this side of the bench work, we have the, we have the team tracks. Loading dock track we use for intermodal shipments. And we have the Stoddard Slate Company. This is the slate pile. And this is their loadout track. Dock here, and in front of the dock is their track for sand, and they have a track to unload cars of coal. They always use coal for uh, heating their buildings. And that pretty well gives you an overview of the entire railroad. This railroad is basically a U-shaped dog bone with harmony on one leg of the dog bone and the town of Prosperity on the other leg of the dog bone. Prosperity represents your typical northeastern industrial town back in the 50s and 60s when things were booming, all the factories were in operation, everybody was, was working. Car loads were high and things were just good. Main road into Prosperity is Northampton Street, which crosses all over the tracks and curves and goes down into the industrial section of town. Northampton Street's the main street through the downtown and industrial area. My dad was a truck driver and this pretty well remembers this the way I remember it. Uh, the trucks were out fouling the road, making deliveries or pickups. You had to drive around them. And it was just a busy place. Industries in Prosperity consist of a team track, Prosperity Transfer and Warehouse Company and the Stone Warehouse Building, the Pitt Chemical Company, which is a building that was built by Walter Apple, the other industries in Prosperity is Becker Electronic Supply and the loading ramp, which is uh, these days being used to load and unload uh, piggyback cars. And the tail track off of the uh, spurs into the team track and the warehouse track curves around behind the buildings and goes around the Slate Belt Dairy where there's a spot for the dairy to unload cars of anthracite coal. On the other side of the street we have Slate Belt Dairy and you can see uh, the coal bin and coal unloading elevator 
and their unloading platform where they receive inbound shipments of milk. The shot of Borden's with some uh, cars of milk uh, spotted for unloading into the dairy. This side of town is what I call uh, West Prosperity on the work orders. Besides the Slate Belt Dairy uh, unloading ramp, the next industry is Davis Manufacturing Corporation, the home of Christine Cody brand of motorcycle accessories. My next industry is Gutsmere Manufacturing, home of the original car route chip. My friend Ron used evergreen channels on top of his cars and each channel was color coded by town with a four letter abbreviation on top of the chip as to where to spot the car. And as having typed thousands of waybills at work, I just didn't want to type waybills again. So I adopted uh, his way of routing cars, I was happy with it, and it's worked great on this railroad. My final industry here in Prosperity is Imperial Foods. Imperial Foods is a wholesale food distributor who receives inbound uh, box cars, refrigerators of foodstuffs and ships them back out throughout the entire area via truck. Town of Harmony on uh, the railroad represents your uh, smaller, just outside of the uh, bigger town, small rural, more rural community. It's uh, got residential housing, which includes uh, duplexes that were found throughout northeastern Pennsylvania. Harmony Meat Packers, which is a local meat packing facility that receives uh, inbound refrigerator cars of meat carcasses and Griffin Brothers Cold and Fuel and behind uh, Griffin Brothers Cold and Fuel we have the Lackawanna Railroad Freight House. The tracks in this view consist of the very first track in front of the stone cut is the main line coming up from staging the next track just above it is the uh, tail track for the yard at um, Lime Ridge. Next track is the branch line main line. The side is the siding. And the third track in at Harmony is the west track. This is the track used to set out all cars picked up at the various industries on the layout for movement back west to the uh, towards uh, Scranton, Pennsylvania. The Harmony turn has uh, picked up the west cars off the west track to take them back to Scranton, to Taylor Yard. And this uh, frees up the view so we can uh, get some close up views of the town of Harmony. Here's a view of Harmony Meat Packers. This was a branch line kit that was uh, built for me by Ted Becker. And I, uh, he, he painted it, and then I weathered it and placed it on the layout. River Brothers Fuel is a Walther's kit that uh, made some modifications to. And it has a scale house out front. It's another Walther's building. Uh, I think that was from their lumber yard kit. I added a scale too with a roof covering it. And Griffin Brothers was actually uh, a coal dealer in Bangor, Pennsylvania that was uh, directly across the street from the roundhouse of Bangor. When I was the agent at Bangor, I could look out my window and see Griffin Brothers coal. And this is the Lackawanna Freight House at Harmony. It has interior lighting and detail all the way around it. And this is a view of the other side of the Frey House in Harmony.
Here's the view down Railroad Avenue at Harmony. There's a gang out here putting a new uh, culvert into the, the roadway. And we have uh, the residential houses. The first one's a, a AMI a farmhouse building I modified with slate roof. The second two are scratch built uh, duplexes. And the uh, house at the end is also scratch built. A uh, view of some of the details in the uh, residential area. Another view of the homes along Railroad Avenue. The uh, two duplex houses are scratch built from uh, map board. The uh, siding on it is scribed with an X-Acto knife, Campbell shingles, and Campbell doors, windows, and uh, porch railings were used to uh, complete the structures. Notice uh, we have the milkman. Ladies waiting for the milkman on the front porch. Deliver milk. We've got uh, people walking on the sidewalk, kids out playing. And then of course, every neighborhood has to have that one person with the messy yard. And our neighborhood here in Railroad Avenue is no exception. This is a scratch built house made with evergreen styrene. It's got a uh, Aero Models shed in the back. And Joe just collects things and never throws anything out. And his yard shows it. The thing that really upsets the neighbors is that Joe Brown's got a chair get an old refrigerator on his front porch so I can just sit in a chair, reach over, grab his beer out of the uh, refrigerator and never have to leave his porch. Lime Junction is the location where the branch line comes off of our main line and continues around the layout to Bath. It's a small four-track yard here that's also an interchange point with the Lehigh Valley Railroad. Lehigh Valley comes up, sets out and picks up from this yard and goes back to staging. Shades of Death Road is just one of those crossings that stop, look, and listen and you never know when a train is going to appear. Or how many? This is the engine servicing tracks at Lime Ridge. We have a, a sanding tower here, a fuel rack, and uh, water racks, and a mechanical department uh, building. The mechanical department building has a lunchroom in it, locker rooms, bathroom, mechanical foreman's office, and a storeroom. And we have an oil house. We got three stub tracks. And like all mechanical facilities, if you'll notice, we've got sand. And we've got our continuous pools of water. And when the roundhouse guys water the engines, they just leave the hose on and they never turn it off as they move from one engine to another. So it always leaves this wet, sloppy mess around the service track. And now we're going to continue on over to the limestone loader. Town of Lime Ridge and Lime Junction get their name from the limestone quarry that's located here. Here's the loadout for the limestone quarry where cars 
of limestone are loaded here and then they're moved over to layout to unload for supply and limestone to Penn Dixie number six Smith Mill in Bath, Pennsylvania. An overview of the town of Penargil on the layout. I have to hand hold this. I just cannot get a tripod in here. But uh, these cars here are on Johnny Rook siding. Johnny Rook siding is, a, is where we gather our cars up during operating sessions for delivery to the Pennsylvania Railroad. And then we have the Stoddard Slate Quarry. This is the slate scrap pile at Stoddard. And this is their loadout track, and beside that is their coal track. Scrap pile is made from actual slate scrap from uh, the Dally Quarry in Penargil, Pennsylvania. Uh, they let me find some small pieces of scrap on their scrap pile is real thin mostly from making roofing slates and then i just smashed them up with a hammer and made my pile here the stoddard slate quarry was the last quarry that was shipping out slate by rail when i was the agent at bangor in 1973 and 1974 they actually shipped through 75 until uh, conrail basically ran the business off and if you're ever over to victoria british columbia the parliament building at victoria was re-roofed while i was agent at bangor it was re-roofed with slate from the stoddard quarry and i way build every car roofing slate for about a six month period that was shipped out to re-roof that building. The reason we have a car of anthracite coal and a coal bin here at the quarry is during the winter time the quarry used anthracite coal to heat all of the, their shanties and their main buildings at the quarry. This is the East Yard at Bath. The purpose of the East Yard at Bath is to be a support yard for Penn Dixie Cement Mill Number no. 6. We have a mainline track, we have a double ended spur track, and we have a stub ended spur track. And trains that arrive here pull down the main first. And they leave their train on the main, cut their engines off, and they go into Penn Dixie Cement and get their pools. So after their engine cuts off, they run down the Penn Dixie lead, pull into Penn Dixie Cement. Penn Dixie Cement Mill number six is built on a nine inch wide shelf. Shelf extends down to my wife's dryer. Nine inches is as far as I could go, and she would still be able to reach into the knobs on her dryer. There are three tracks of Penn Dixie. First track is the bulk track for loading bulk cars of cement. Second track is the package track for loading bag cement into box cars. And then we have the coal track, which is an elevated uh, trestle track used to spot uh, cars of coal on for unloading and also the occasional covered hopper car of clinker to be unloaded. The clinker comes from the Midwest. It's a darker color mortar cement uh, than what's produced here locally and it's used uh, for making dark color mortar. Group pulls back up the Penn Dixie lead. Next the Pools out at Penn Dixie Cement are brought over here into the yard. And they are set into the double ended spur here. And then the cars are left here to be picked up on the departure.
Next, go back to our train and we're going to get our spotters. Our next move here for the second cement drill is to pull up and we're going to put the caboose on the loads that we pulled out of Penn Dixie for the train's return trip. We only have room for a four car spot in the bulk track at Penn Dixie Cement today and we have six cars so we're going to take our two excess cars and we're going to set them over on the stub track at the east yard and we're going to leave them here. We shove our two extra cars into the stub storage track and we're going to cut away from them. Brakeman's made our cut. Now we're going to go and spot our loads into Pin Dixie number six. Now the crew on the second cement drill. Shoves their spotters back to Pendixie 6 down to Pendixie Lee. Shove them to a joint with the cars that are already on the track. Brakeman's made a cut. Ranger runs back out the Pendixie lead and then back out to the yard. And next we come back up the main. We go by the limestone unloader or Pendixie 6 oh, beside you? our outbound yeah. train. Brakeman's line to switch, giving us the come ahead. The other brakeman's down by the, the joint, following his hand signals. And we're coming in to a joint. And we shove the engine train clear of the crossing. And we'll leave the train here. Continue our tour of Bath while the crew pumps up their air and does their initial terminal air test. This is a view of the West Yard at Bath. The West Yard at Bath is a support yard for Keystone Cement and it's the uh, location of the interchange with the Northampton and Bath Railroad and the interchange with the Lehigh and New England Railroad. The yard has uh, tracks one through five. Track one has the track scale on it. Track two is a stub. Tracks three, four, and five are double-ended tracks. And track number five is the interchange track with the Lehigh New England Railroad. And we uh, see three cars placed on the interchange track by the first cement drill for the Lehigh New England to pick up. Keystone Cement is a major shipper on the layout. Have a coal dock. There's some cars of coal sitting there waiting to be unloaded. We have two bulk loading tracks, one package loading track. Lehigh New England also serves this mill and we see a Lehigh New England car spotted on one of their loading tracks. And we see our track scale here in the foreground. We're in luck today. The Lehigh New England Keystone Drill is pulling into town.
crew stopped. They're uh, checking their pickup. And they're going to go back and make a cut on their set out. Keystone drill shoves back into the interchange track, track 5, pick up their cars. Got a hold of the cars, and brakes already knocked off. Oh, they did not. Couple. Gonna go back. Okay, we're gonna go back, gonna stretch them just a little bit. See if we got them. Okay, we have them all. Now we're going to pull out. Next, the pickup shoved back against the train. Pull up, clear the crossover switch. Okay, the Lehigh's Keystone drill is clear, is coming back now to make it set out to the Erie Lackawanna on track number five. So we got the empty refrigerator car coming back, Condola car of coal for Davis Manufacturing and a car of coal for Griffin Brothers. The LNA crew pulled out of the, the uh, track and now they're going to cut their engine off and they're going to go down they're going to start switching Twin Dixie cement. And our, our way back we come across this second cement drill pulled in a siding at Pinargel and stopping behind the Shades of Death Road Crossing for meat. We return back to Lime Ridge and we find the Keystone job has been made up sitting on the till track uh, ready to depart the yard. Let's follow him on his trip to Bath. He's doing job, pulls out of the tail track, and pulls up the lead. A line junction. High rate to take it over. Next, a train pulls up to Northampton Street crossing at Prosperity and stops to flag the crossing. Our head brakeman's gotten off, flagged crossing, all traffic is stopped, and we will proceed. We pass through the back side of Prosperity now, passing the team track. And we turn around just in time to catch a glimpse of our train as he goes around the curve. He goes around the back side of Prosperity. Next we catch our train as he comes around the S curve here of Prosperity and over Shade to Death Road and meets the first cement drill, it's in the clear. We meet him here in Harmony.
Now you can see our limestone job going behind the houses here in Harmony. Now our limestone job rolls past the Stoner Lake Quarry at Penargo. And our train arrives here at the East Yard of Bath. This is where he's going to swap the uh, three loads of limestone for the three empties over in the unloader. And there we have it. Now, the reason we wanted to show you this video is because Bob has subsequently torn down that whole layout, except for the one area with a cement plant. And he's remodeling his house and he's going to be building a new larger layout. Um, if you want to stay and ask Bob questions, he also is prepared to show us the track plan for his new layout. So we can, uh, if you want to stick around, you can see what he's thinking of doing. Are there any questions for Bob? There are a lot of things, Bob, to be impressed by on your layout, but uh, the thing that I just kept noticing was how well the ground cover approaches, not just the railroad tracks, but the buildings. Wherever there's a building in real life or a fence line, there's always a bunch of crud and scud and, and uh, weeds and <clears throat> things blown up against it. It never meets the ground just cleanly. And that, gee, you really are set into the ground as long, you know, along with the fences and other things that uh, just uh, uh, collect, collect uh, debris uh, as the wind blows it up. So beautiful job of that. Gee, that's realistic. Oh, thanks, Jim. And most of the buildings in the town of Prosperity are all built on 80 uh, inch, 80 thousand of an inch thick uh, styrene. And then the styrene, uh, uh, is put in in place on the layout. That way I, I could do all that detailing on the workbench. Uh, now that you're moving on to your next layout, are you planning on incorporating any parts of your old layout in your new? Yeah, just the area that was uh, bath along the side wall of the garage is going to be kept. And that'll be the end of a branch line going into the cement mills and everything else is gone. It's already removed. Wow. Will you be reusing some of the buildings? Oh yeah, I saved all the buildings. I plan to reuse them all. Uh, how, how long have you had the layout in the garage? Oh, uh, let's see. I started building that in uh, about the fall of 2009 until last year and it's Operational wise, it's based on the Bangor and Portland branch of the Erie Lackawanna. Do you, do you want to go ahead and show us the plan? Okay. The railroad is going to run from uh, Wilkes-Barre, Pennsylvania, and over the Pocono Mountains, across the Delaware River into northern New, New Jersey. The railroad will split. One uh, branch line is going to go off to Maybrook, New York, connect with the New Haven Railroad. And the uh, other leg of the railroad's going, to, the main line's going to continue on towards uh, Jersey City. That'd be the theme. It's sort of like picture the New York, Susquehanna, Western, and the Wilkes-Barre and Eastern at one time when those two railroads were connected together and ran from Jersey City to Wilkes-Barre. Um, how much space do you have overall? Oh, uh, let's see. From here to there, is uh, 23 feet and from here over to there is 21 feet. So this was the front bedroom, this was the living room here and this used to be a, was where the bathroom is. So all these walls are coming out. And the railroad will start here on Wilkes-Barre. Uh, oh, I always liked the turntable roundhouse ever since I saw it on John Allen's Glory and Defeat It back in the 60s. Always wanted one, so finally going to have it. And then this will be the uh, passenger station here at Wilkes Bear with coach track over here and express track. So we're going to come around here to Music. Uh, Music was a cold town uh, between Wilkes Bear and Scranton. Uh, my stepfather grew up in Music and he 
and he worked in uh, three different coal mines there in Moosic. He was a coal miner. Died a block lung. And uh, so we're going to have a coal mine here. This will be my coal town. And we'll swing around over here to Port Murray. Port Murray's actual town on the Phillipsburg branch of the Lackawanna Railroad and had a brick quarry there. I already got the kiln, so we're going to have the brick quarry over there and some other industries. And then we're going to come around here to Steelton. All the anthracite railroads had one thing in common. They served cold cement and steel. That was the thing they all had in, in common. So this would be uh, Steelton. Should Lehigh Valley was Bethlehem Steel. The way I model this is this will be buildings representing the steel mill in here. I have four tracks here that'll go between the buildings and be hidden and go back. And then they'll be doubling at the other end that this interval will represent interchange with the Pennsylvania Railroad at Wilkes-Barre. And that way cars that went in for the steel mill will come out here as cars off the PRR and get yard transferred up into the yard here. And cars for the Pennsy will go back in there and then eventually they'll come out the other end as, as cars coming out of the steel mill. Just a different uh, take on loads in, loads out uh, industries. The other thing I remember too is uh, growing up was team yards in Jersey. So I have a team yard up here. I remember going with my dad and we'd back his truck up to mostly uh, Fruit Growers Express refrigerator cars and unload um, citrus fruit coming up from Florida right, right out of the refrigerator cars. So that's what we'll model here. And a couple industries over there and of course our coal dealer. So we'll come across here. I want to put a great big uh, nice tall bridge. I'd like to put a Lackawanna style arch bridge in there. And then the layout's going to continue here down to a lower level. This lower level is going to, we come down here. This is a track coming out from the upper level. And this will be a constant 3.5% grade. That's what third planet says I need here. And that way I don't have to have a helix. And we'll come down here to cement junction. And this is where the, the branch line will go off here going through the wall into the garage. I have to put a lift out here across this. Be a four foot wide aisle here in order to make it to the garage. So for cement junction, we're gonna come over here to Slatington. I saved my slate quarry from the old layout. That'll go here. And I also wanna build a slate factory. The last time I was back to Pennsylvania, I took a bunch of pictures of the one and only remaining slate factory in Penargel, Pennsylvania. I'm gonna model that. And then we'll come over here to Edison. At Buttsville, New Jersey, the Edison Cement Company had a big quarry. It was actually it was served by both the Lehigh and Hudson River and the Lackawanna. The uh, quarry here loaded on the Lackawanna side um, cars of limestone to go to Edison's, Edison Portland Cement in uh, New Village, New Jersey on the Lackawanna Phillipsburg branch. So my son, three years ago, gave me a Walters Glacier Gravel Company conveyor system there, loading system for Christmas, saying, Dad, you have to have a ballast quarry on your railroad. He's in the maintenance away in the BNSF, so that's why we got that. And I'm going to come over here to town at Peak West. When I was a kid growing up, Peak West was on the Lehigh and Hudson River. Uh, my Aunt Betty's house would have been right here. Every time a train ran, I was visiting a train went by, I had to run out the back door to the tracks, watch Lehigh and Hudson trains go by. And then at Peak West, there was what was called a tar plant. It was a Kramer Oil Company. They got in uh, tank cars of asphalt, and they uh, had, had a steam uh, boiler there, and they uh, unloaded the cars, put them in these big tanks, and then they loaded them into trucks for road construction projects all over North Jersey. And there was a short little team track here also. And I remember uh, Lehigh and Hudson would put in uh, cars there of box cars of feed a few, a few times a year. And the local farmers would all come down and back up to that car and unload them. And on the actual Lehigh and Hudson, the, the Peak West River went underneath here. And, and, and there was a siding here called Peak West. My great grandfather used to talk about he was on the LNHR construction crew that built that siding and how they they had a steam crane from the construction of the Panama Canal and that's what they used to scoop out the side of the hillside there 
along along the river and widen the right of way to, to put that siding in. So we, that's why I have Peak West. And then over here would be the staging. Uh, this will form a reversing loop. Uh, three double-ended tracks here and some stub tracks. And the other thing I did here is I got a, just a, a double track main line down here, just going all the way around. There's times that I just like to just watch a train go around in a circle. So I just put, decided this way I can just put a couple trains on and just let them flip around. So operation-wise, from Wilkes-Barre to Cement Junction will be a single track train order timetable. Cement Junction here, you'll get onto the double track rule 261 and, and go on into uh, staging. And then from here, we go into the present layout. That's uh, the piece that I'm saving. And this is the piece that I'm saving. We'll go through the wall. We just put a wall in right here. So this came down to build that wall. But when I put it back in, it'll be a wider shelf and we'll have a Penn Dixie cement with three tracks instead of just two. And that's what the new layout's going to be. Thanks, Bob. That, that looks like a lot of fun. I designed it for operation switching. <laughs> yeah, we'll go ahead and schedule you for a layout tour in, in 2028 when you've okay. got that whole thing done. In April. We'll do it on the April meeting of 2028. Actually, I designed it so the bottom level will be a, a, could go into operation first. Yeah. <laughs> and then and then That's start on, on, on the top level. That's great. Well, thank you very much. I wanted to also mention that uh, Bob has posted a number of uh, YouTube videos of his various trains in operation. And there, uh, if you go into YouTube and search for, uh, I think it's Train Master Bob. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Two words. Yeah, uh, before I ripped the railroad down, I videoed each of the trains we normally ran at, in, in an operating session. What what heights above the floor are your two levels mainly going to be? Okay, well, the top level, uh, well, the bottom level will be at 44 inches. But our garage is 10 inches below the level of the rest of the house. So at 54 inches will become 44 inches uh, at cement junction. And then it'll drop down on the 40 inches at the uh, staging yard. And then the top one is going, it's going to be at 55 inches, which will yeah. give me 15 inches between the, the level for most of it. Hello again. Um, this is a, another reminder that this uh, virtual layout tour has been brought to you by members of the fourth division of the Pacific Northwest region of the National Model Railroad Association. And we hope you've enjoyed it. And we want to encourage you to, again, find out about the NMRA online. Uh, both PNR and NMRA have an excellent website where you can get information about joining and participating in this and other activities like our clinics that are held all over the region. So thank you for joining us today and wish you great modeling.